How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. and watch and be utterly amazed for I am about to do something in your day that you would not believe even if you were told I am raising up the Chaldeans that ruthless and impetuous people who sweep across the whole earth to seize dwelling places not their own they are a feared and dreaded people they are a law to themselves and promote their own honor their horses are swifter than leopards fiercer than wolves at dusk their cavalry gallops headlong their horsemen come from afar they fly like a vulture sweeping to devour they all come bent on violence. Their hordes advance like a desert wind and gather prisoners like sand. They deride kings and scoff at rulers. They laugh at fortified cities. They build earthen ramps and capture them. Then they sweep past like the wind and go on. Guilty men whose own strength is their god. Either there is no pattern of history at all, which destroys every sense of the meaning of life, or there is a pattern, but it is beyond our comprehension and under a sovereignty which we can only dimly discern. O Lord, are you not from everlasting? My God, my Holy One, we will not die. O Lord, you have appointed them to execute judgment. O Rock, you have ordained them to punish. Your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrong. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up those more righteous than themselves? You have made men like fish in the sea, like sea creatures that have no ruler. The wicked foe pulls all of them up with hooks. He catches them in his net. He gathers them up in his dragnet. And so he rejoices and is glad. Therefore he sacrifices to his net and burns incense to his dragnet, for by his net he lives in luxury and enjoys the choicest food. Is he to keep on emptying his net, destroying nations without mercy? Habakkuk the prophet says that if God is going to use a nation like Babylon, if he's going to use those whose God is their own might, then what does that do to man? Well, it makes him like the fish of the sea. The big one eats up the little one, and that's the way it is. The law of the jungle prevails. Might makes right. Every man is for himself. 
And see, what Habakkuk is saying is that God himself has done this to man and has made man like this. And see, what he says is, is there no end to this? I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. Then the Lord replied, Write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time it speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. Indeed, wine betrays him. He is arrogant and never at rest. Because he is as greedy as the grave and like death is never satisfied, he gathers to himself all the nations and takes captive all the peoples. Woe to him who piles up stolen goods and makes himself wealthy by extortion. How long must this go on? Will not your debtors suddenly arise? Will they not wake up and make you tremble? Then you will become their victim. Because you have plundered many nations, the peoples who are left will plunder you. For you have shed man's blood, you have destroyed lands and cities, and everyone in them. I built a mansion on the sand. It turned out just as I had planned. It stood so tall and looked so grand. so secure until I found that I had built on shifting ground then the rains came the walls gave way and crumbled in the choice of this century. Your votes were a mandate which I accepted. To complete the initiatives we began in my first exist. Woe to him who builds his realm by unjust gain, to set his nest on high, to escape the clutches of ruin. You have plotted the ruin of many peoples, shaming your own house and forfeiting your life. The stones of the wall will cry out, and the beams of the woodwork will echo it. The evacuation will be completed. Woe to him who builds a city with bloodshed and establishes a town by crime. Has not the Lord Almighty determined that the people's labor is only fuel for the fire, that the nations exhaust themselves for nothing? For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. God is saying, there is justice, and it's already built into the system. Now, this is what we have to see in these woes. We look around our society at the present time and say, where is God? Why doesn't he do something? We're thinking of direct intervention. I simply raise the question as we now go through this section. 
As we look at our own country today, did God do something? Woe to him who gives drink to his neighbors, pouring it from the wineskin until they are drunk, so that he can gaze on their naked bodies. You will be filled with shame instead of glory. Now it is your turn. Drink and be exposed. The cup from the Lord's right hand is coming around to you, and disgrace will cover your glory. The violence you have done to Lebanon will overwhelm you, and your destruction of animals will terrify you. For you have shed man's blood, you have destroyed lands and cities, and everyone in them. We tend to think that God, see, has abandoned his world, he's off somewhere else, and the day will finally come when he breaks in and everything comes into judgment. Habakkuk does not do that. These woes are continuing now in the outworking of the cycle of judgment right now upon the situation. The final resolution is in the day of wrath, and that is at the end of the age. But we, in fact, are living in a world right now that is being judged, and we are caught up in that. Of what value is an idol, since a man has carved it? Or an image that teaches lies? For he who makes it trusts in his own creation. He makes idols that cannot speak. Woe to him who says to wood, come to life. Or to lifeless stone, wake up. Can it give guidance? It is covered with gold and silver. There is no breath in it. But the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. Lord, I have heard of your fame. I stand in awe of your deeds, O Lord. Renew them in our day. In our time, make them known. In wrath, remember mercy. God came from Timon, the Holy One from Mount Paran. His glory covered the heavens, and his praise filled the earth. His splendor was like the sunrise, rays flashed from his hand where his power was hidden. Plague went before him, pestilence followed his steps. He stood and shook the earth. He looked and made the nations tremble. The ancient mountains crumbled, and the age-old hills collapsed. His ways are eternal. I saw the tents of Cushion in distress, the dwellings of Midian in anguish. Were you angry with the rivers, O Lord? Was your wrath against the streams? Did you rage against the sea when you rode with your horses and your victorious chariots? You uncovered your bow. You called for many arrows. You split the earth with rivers. The mountains saw you and writhed. Torrents of water swept by. The deep roared and lifted its waves on high. Sun and moon stood still in the heavens at the glint of your flying arrows, at the lightning of your flashing spear. In wrath you strode to the earth, and in anger you threshed the nations. You came out to deliver your people, to save your anointed one.
God's righteousness is revealed, yes. And God's wrath is revealed, yes. Because, of course, judgment is necessary for righteousness to prevail. God has taken the problem of evil seriously. It all comes into focus at the cross, for one thing. That's part of the mystery of the cross, is that the very judgment of God against the wicked one seems to be enacted against Jesus Christ, the righteous one, his own son. Our view of the gospel is that I get life by faith in Jesus Christ. I trust that Christ died for my sin, and I use faith to believe that, and I'm given life. But I think what Habakkuk is saying, we live by faith, which is not only coming alive by faith, but we continue in the process. stripped him from head to foot. With his own spear, you pierced his head when his warriors stormed out to scatter us, gloating as though about to devour the wretched who were in hiding. You trampled the sea with your horses, churning the great waters. I heard, and my heart pounded. My lips quivered at the sound. Decay crept into my bones and my legs trembled. Yet will I wait patiently for the day of calamity to come on the nation invading us. Whatever success the Chaldeans have is temporary and it will not last. So we all stand up and cheer. Now it's not only the Chaldeans, of course, but it's anyone whose soul is not upright in him. But the righteous shall live. But then we've got that little word that's thrown in, he shall live by faith. How did Israel live? The nation doesn't live. The nation's destroyed. They're carted off into captivity. Habakkuk himself probably lived to the day and made the, the trek to Babylon where he died. See, God doesn't say the just shall live. He said they'll live by faith. Part of the story of Habakkuk is that the righteous suffer right along with the wicked. When God's judgment comes, we will be involved. But we can live in a world where seemingly there is violence and injustice because we know God is in control and his process is being worked out. Therefore, it seems to me that the, the answer is that we, we find out what it means to live by faith. Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. The Sovereign Lord is my strength. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to go on the heights. I ponder the mystery of why God's taking this time to break in 
into our history to set right all of the crime. security runs through our fingers, yet I'll grit my teeth and bear it. No, I will rejoice in the Lord. God says the very one who would try to save his life will lose it. You will forfeit your life if you try to live for your own security. See, to live by faith is to live by the strength of God. 